You've said that when six sphere natural love spirits change to the divine love path, they mm -hmm. often have to go back down to a fourth sphere or something. The third, yeah. Third, okay. Yep. Um, can the same thing happen when you're changing from natural love to divine love from a lower sphere? Like I feel that I, you know, had more truth intellectually and and morally, but now having to, I have to feel like I've had to step back to embrace emotional truth. Yes, and what you raised is a very good question, Graham. So if I can just illustrate it as the spheres grow. So if this is a first, second, third, fourth, and then fifth and sixth sphere, um, when, when most people are in a religion of some type or and they are very sincere in the way they practice their religion, or they are on the what you would call the new age sort of path beliefs, but they're very, very sincere about how they practice those particular beliefs. Most people have a very clear intellectual viewpoint of what is moral and also what is uh, loving in terms of an intellectual, from an intellectual perspective. And so you could say for many people they have progressed at least to the second sphere and often to the third and sometimes even to the fourth in, on earth in a very intellectual way in terms of they're, they're trying hard to practice the principles of love in their day-to-day -day life. And, and for many, they love animals, and so, uh, you know, they don't eat meat anymore. They, they love um, other people, and so they practice a, a life of giving rather than a life of just getting for themselves. And many practice, uh, have no clear concept of God, perhaps, but practice some strong uh, feeling, they have some strong feelings inside of them about the need to have integrity, personal integrity and honesty. And so even though they feel drawn sometimes to do a dishonest thing or uh, have a lack of integrity, their intellect kicks in and stops them from doing such things. So you could say that they're, they're intellectually... ...understanding the principles of love and, and um, truth to a degree. And, uh, and a, as a result of that, they uh, feel that they are progressing. They feel that they understand things quite well from an intellectual perspective and they feel they are progressing. The only problem is, is that in that path there's a lot of things we're not learning about emotions and emotional truth and the condition of our soul in comparison with our intellect. So remember if we drew our bodies, right, our spirit, our material body, our spirit body and then our soul, so that's our soul, our spirit, sorry, spirit body and physical body. The brain of the spirit body is what's dominating the individual, usually in that case. In other words, the brain of the spirit body has worked out a lot of th intellectual truths, and as a result, the brain is quite dominant. The, 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 you could call it the spirit body's mind, if you like, is the brain of the spirit body, is the dominant aspect of their being. So that's what causes them to do most things in their day-to-day -day life. Now, once we start to grasp the divine love path, and this is a, is a transition to go to the divine love path, and we realise that everything is soul-centric. So now we're starting to focus on what is really in my soul, not what do I think is in my soul, or what do I hope is in my soul, is usually what it is. We hope that things are in our soul that is not there. And so what happens is we start to go through this transitional period where we're less determining truth with our mind and we're trying to see whether we actually feel that truth in our soul or not. Now initially that transition takes time and, uh, and it depends how intellectually dominant we've been as to how long it takes. But once we get to the point where our soul becomes the dominant, and, and that actually occurs during the transition in the seventh sphere, um, and up until then we're learning. 
how to let go of the mind, the spirit body's mind and the spirit body's concepts and actually learn more and more about living just in the soul, living in the feelings, what do I feel and only living it. And in fact, you don't even ask yourself anymore what you're feeling. You just live in the feeling, whatever that is. And because it's mostly harmonious with love, um, it, it, you're not damaging yourself or anybody else in that place which is a very different place here because you can be in your mind acting in harmony with what you believe to be love and truth but at the same time coming out of your emotions might, uh, might out of your soul might be all of these sort of jagged emotions if you like anger fear and other emotions might be coming out of your soul at the same time so in that place even though you think you're not damaging anybody and you're attempting to not damage anybody in your day-to-day -day life, the reality is because it's still coming out of your soul, it is still damaging your environment, damaging people, damaging plants, animals, everything in your environment actually. And, it, and it's the soul's attractions that determine what's going on in terms of your day-to-day -day life, in terms of your law of attraction for your day-to-day -day life. What, when I say your law of attraction, your soul has a condition that attracts events to it trying to correct the unhealed emotions or the unhealed love in your soul not corrected in your mind so it's trying to correct this and not this and so for, for many of us when we hear about the divine love path we first learn it intellectually and we develop intellectually here by learning a whole new set of concepts and truths that are God's truths, that we have a feeling of God's truths, but we are still not embracing them from anything other than our mind. So for many of us over the last three, four years, you've heard a lot of concepts in your mind and you've embraced them in your mind to a, to a degree, but they're yet to actually be inside of your soul. Because once they're inside of your soul, you cannot do anything else. It's impossible. So, so once you're inside, it's inside of your soul, for example. Once a moral issue, for example, about looking at a woman, say, let's say you're a male and you're so used to looking at women sexually, you know, looking at them as sexual objects through your life, once you deal with that inside of your soul, you physically and emotionally do not look at a woman like that anymore. It's just gone from you altogether. You don't have to try. Whereas if you're on the intellectual path, you'd be noticing, oh, I looked at the woman again, looked at the woman again, and you'd be trying to not look or trying to do things that cause you to not look, for example. That's a very different condition. One's a condition where you're trying to do something. The other one's a condition where you are actually doing it and not having to try at all. So this is actually when you're in your soul completely, it's a very relaxed state. It's not doesn't feel pressure, you don't feel huge amounts of pressure or intense. It's a very relaxed and peaceful sort of a state in, in your soul. But the transition is very difficult. And it's the transition that most of us resist. We feel we're going crazy. Uh, that's usually one of the primary feelings. But there's also lots of other feelings we have in attempting to stop being dominant here and start actually feeling our way through things. So, so you go through this place that you say you're going through, Graham, this place where you sort of feel like you knew more before than you know now. And you do actually go through that, that, that phase, if you like, where before you knew all this stuff, but it was all intellectual knowledge that you put into practice in your day-to-day -day life because you felt strongly about the intellectual knowledge. But that's a totally different thing than having that same knowledge in your soul and dominating your actions from your soul. And that is a very different place. The two places, I, I have to you know, emphasise that it's so different that the majority of us are not even understanding yet how different those two places are. So the majority of us hear a talk like last week, for example, about the facade self, and then we try not to be our facade self. Because we, we've heard all these things about, you know, how dangerous it is or damaging it can be. So we try not to be our facade self, but we're still doing it with our mind. It's not yet a feeling where we don't want to be our facade self anymore and a, and a feeling that drives it now that it's impossible for us to be our facade self anymore. And it's not yet a feeling. So we can actually learn things with our mind that we're yet and sometimes years away from learning in our soul. 
and yet at the same time we're thinking we know it in our mind and that often prevents us from knowing it in our soul yeah when, um, when i first encountered your descriptions of the spheres i had thought mm, based on my own experience i'm in third sphere yep because i based my life on truth and honesty and and yep. that sort of stuff yep. but i've just been realizing that i i've got to go back to embracing emotional honesty and that puts me back in first sphere exactly and and so many people this is what many people struggle with the divine love path the reason why they struggle is because they have often progressed on the natural love path particularly people who are sincere like yourself have progressed on the natural love path quite significantly on earth and yet once they come to terms with the fact that the divine love path everything's happening in the soul and they go wow like i don't even really feel my soul let alone know how to get feelings into or truth into it and actually become stable within me as a result and so it feels like a regression and because it feels like a regression the majority of people do not wish to embrace it for that reason because it feels like you're having to step back and one of the primary reasons why we don't want to embrace it is because of a f there is this underlying feeling that we develop when we've developed in self-reliance there is generally a, a bit of arrogance involved in the self-reliance where i've done this i've had to do it for myself i've had to feel it myself i've had to work through it myself i know it and there's this very strong feeling of self-reliance in that place that you now don't want to give up either because it feels good it actually feels quite satisfying and uh, and so for many of us it's difficult to give up that feeling and go well how does god see me rather than how, how do i see myself and what is really in my soul rather than what i think is in my soul and they are two very different places and you'll notice that some of the recordings on the net that i've put on the net about my discussions with six sphere sp spirits they often come thinking they've learned something and then during the discussion we start talking about the emotions that they actually still hold within them that they thought that already dealt with and it's very hard for them at that point to actually allow themselves to go into the emotion because it feels like a regression it feels like they're sort of going backwards rather than going forward yeah uh, but it's an essential part of actually learning this single way that god provided so remember that god's path is he is our soul he is god god has only one way to connect to you and it's a way god created so it's got nothing to do with what man thinks nothing to do with what any single person on earth has ever thought so the problem for many of us is that we've taken up teachings that other people or other other men and women on earth have thought and therefore created so even a religion is like that most of it comes from the thoughts of people putting together into a into a doctrine of some kind that then a group of people practice now the path to god is none of those ways the path to God is God's way of love and truth. So, so God's way is very simple in the sense that this soul has to remove from itself this umbrella that it constantly has where it's trying to or is preventing God's love from flowing into it. And the soul itself has its will, through its own will, established that umbrella and the soul therefore through its own will needs to remove the umbrella but then also through this process become more reliant on god not intellectually but actually a feeling of more reliance in the sense of day-to-day -day life you know you're more reliant just because you can feel it and that's very very different and so what happens is for the majority of people on earth they'd like to connect to god many people who are religious really want to connect to god but because they are not embracing god's way and want to embrace their own it prevents the connection from occurring and then when they realize they've been embracing their own for a period of time and have to embrace god's now if they really want to connect to god what they finish up doing is feeling like they're going backwards and that then triggers feelings of a lack it, it, it triggers feelings where they're feeling confronted with their ego 
And then as a result of being confronted by the ego, they then want to maintain or hold on to self-reliance. So it's a process we've got to go through to release that. So, so if you just remember that the, the path that I'm describing is not my path. It, it never has been my path. So right, even in the first century, it was never my path. It was a path that I discovered that God had designed for all humans. Uh, not just for one or a few humans, but all humans, if they want to connect to God, this is the only way to connect to God. It's the only path. But it's not designed by a person. and It's, it, it, it's up to each person to want to discover it for themselves. But it's not designed by a person. It's not like a... There's a bit of ringing now, Igor. If you can just chuck my volume down a little, maybe. Um, it's not a um, path that is able to be defined intellectually by a person on earth because the path itself was created by God and we all we can do on earth is discover it and do it that's all we can do that's all I've ever been able to do and that's all anybody who finds the divine love path can do is to discover what God intended with the, with our soul and then do that it feels to me like that it feels to me like there's a part within me that God's designed, built into me, and it's my access to God, I feel, is through feeling that lack within myself. You know how you've often described about how six fear spirits, the only way they progress is by feeling what's missing. Yep. And it feels like I'm sort of trying to get in contact with that within myself, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and that's what's brought me back is by going with that. Exactly. Going, in, going into that hole within myself, what's missing. Yep. And it's a similar, um, in a way it's similar to connection with soulmate is a similar thing too, in that sense that there is this inbuilt place within us that God's created for us to have. And, and we all feel it, but we act it out in denial generally. You know, through our denied emotions we do all sorts of things, but not actually get to the real emotion of longing or missing God or longing or missing our soulmate as an emotion rather than a thought or an addiction. So, yeah, it's a very different place in both cases. Um, so the problem for many of us is that we hear all of these truths and we like the feeling of being present with them. Does that make sense? Like we like the feeling of being a part of the truths, but to, to actually do it means letting go of this umbrella that we've put over ourselves as protection. You could think of it, in reality what it is, is it's really like a huge barrier, which our facade self, which we talked about uh, a weekend ago, and it's this huge barrier that we place around our soul that prevents anybody from really getting in, let alone God getting in, unless the person meets the addictions of the barrier. In other words, unless the, the barrier is only able to be permeated when certain addictions are met. And what we're doing in our relationship with God is releasing these addictions that we have. But one of the addictions is our own self-reliance. We're, we're addicted to wanting to define ourselves, ourselves, rather than have God who created our personality just say, look, this is the personality I've created you to be. You just need to discover who you are. What we do instead is, no, I don't like that person. <laughs> Uh, nor did my mum and dad like that person and let's face it the majority of people on the earth haven't really liked that person either so what I do is I put her or him in this big shell and then I be that person this new person that I've created and and the problem is that person can progress on the natural love path quite significantly but unfortunately cannot progress at all or very very rarely on the divine love path because to progress on the divine love path, you have to become yourself. And that's very difficult for the majority of us. Yeah. Eagle?